the Wall Street Journal. How the world's largest shipyard is challenging China's dominance. South Korea's shipbuilding. Wait, South Korea has the largest shipyard in the world? I mean, I know they have large shipyards because like Samsung is also a sh ship producer, if I'm not wrong. Okay, let's see. This is Chungjo the Great, a next generation warship made in South Korea. Oh, one of the most powerful of its kind, and it, it cost only look $600 really million dollars to build. A similar ship would cost almost a billion dollars more to construct in the US. Damn, what the hell? That's why is it so much? Oh, yeah, the American military and the American taxpayer are being ripped off, huh? The cost of building a warship in the US has soared, while production times have slowed to a crawl after decades of deindustrialization left America with only a handful of shipyards. No. Meanwhile, it's strategic rival China. See, that's how important, like, the fusion between e econom economy? Yeah, economy, job, industry, and the military is. It, you mess with that, you mess with every, like, it is just horrible. China has churned out hundreds of new ships, now commanding the world's largest and fastest growing navy. Now the U.S. is looking to Asia's shipyards to help close that gap as the two superpowers move closer to a potential conflict. In the 1970s, the U.S. shipbuilding industry had 13 public shipyards operating across the country, building about 5% of the world's tonnage. Today, only four yards are still in operation. Whoa! 15 down to four. Damn! That's horrible. In the whole country, there's like four or five ship four oh that's that's i thought there was a shipyard in florida that's just the identifier that is horrible the navy is prevented from buying or constructing new ships abroad by a 1965 amendment to federal law and that has allowed china to set a course to one day end u.s naval dominance beijing is now the top global shipmaker by a wide margin giant chinese firms that crank out merchant ships for the world are often the same ones building warships for China's Navy. Less than a decade ago, the US Navy held more battle force ships compared to China. Since then, China's fleet has rapidly overtaken the US Navy and is projected to have 435 million. That is horrible. But interesting that even though the US ports went down from 15 to four, their force level of ships is more or less like maintained it's not like falling it's plateaued out but yeah china is just like phew, going straight up military vessels by 2030 outsizing the u.s by over a third officials are now in a race against time to stop that from happening while the navy can't buy ships from abroad it can import expertise and if there is one place that can rival china's shipbuilding prowess it's south korea the country oh, is a leader in shipbuilding Hyundai. i thought it was samsung okay Right, okay, okay. Think specializing in high end military vessels and large commercial ships. Much of that work takes place here at the largest shipyard in the world, operated by Hyundai Heavy Industries. Each year, dozens of military and commercial Hyundai. ships are okay. built here. Hyundai. And the U.S. Navy sees this as one answer to a vexing problem how to catch up with China. Zhengzhou the Great is the first of several new destroyers Hyundai is building. The U.S. is prohibited from buying these vessels directly, oh, it's huge. but naval officials want to replicate how Hyundai makes them at a fraction of the cost. The ship measures more than 550 feet and can carry up to 300 crew. It's fitted with a Ooh, weapon system very fast. that has a detection range of about 500 miles and can track over a thousand targets at once. The ship has a vertical launch system. 500 miles. I'm pretty sure that's like most of South Korea's length if not the whole length one ship can see that oh, damn that is some fantastic sensors on that ship capable of firing missiles at targets in the air or on land expanded sonar capabilities allow the vessel to detect submarines at a range far greater than older destroyers we have a hexagon uh, radar up there that radar is uh, very powerful so once the uh, north korea uh, launched the missile uh, that radar can detect in a uh, less than a uh, second America has a fleet of ships just like this, but what makes this one different being built here in Korea? Uh, we, can, we can build a ship in a very cost-effective way. Uh, we have a very healthy and reliable uh, marine industry around us. We can control the cost and uh, 
we we are adapting the very good uh, shipbuilding technology from the, our main shipyard. Hyundai's military ships are built Damn, in the same. Damn, it was like, yeah, yeah, this is some side job. <laughs> our main shipyard does something else. Wow. Now, now that is a good mix of economy, job market, and like military production. South Korea has gone really far with naval production, I would say. South Korea and even Japan, they've got really good naval production. Same yard as the company's commercial vessels, where about 40 to 50 holes are built each year. It means the company can build the destroyer in just 18 months, significantly faster than the 28 months it would take in the US. We are sharing all the shipbuilding technology from the commercial shipbuilding. We share all, all the uh, new technology for the uh, improving the productivity for the shipbuilding. So that also makes us the very efficient. That efficiency is what US naval officials are hoping to replicate. Secretary of the U.S. Navy, Carlos del Toro, traveled to Asia as part of a pitch to shipbuilders to help revive American shipyards. We shut down many shipyards in this country, thinking that we would not need them. We became less competitive. Because of that, our building of our naval capabilities, of our naval ships, have become far more expensive because there are far fewer shipyards that actually build our Navy ships. Once those vessels are built, mm. analysts say that in a prolonged conflict, Maintaining the fleet near the battle space is key. Hyundai Heavy Industries recently signed an agreement to allow U.S. naval hulls to be repaired in South Korea. That's an Indian ship. I believe that is INS Talwar. Very beautiful ship. <laughs> My bad. My had to point it out. This will allow U.S. vessels in need of repair to stay in Asia instead of making the lengthy journey back to American shipyards you are looking at the Chinese having greater availability of ships, there's also a geographical advantage that China faces of where mm. they should maintain, repair, and overhaul the ships. You don't want to have a battle out there in the Philippine Sea and then you have to retire all the way to Guam or even all the way to stateside. Um, then you will leave a gap where you have no ships or too few ships to make any difference in the mm. theatre. Hyundai Heavy Industries will soon help start training shipbuilding engineers in the U.S. But these measures may not meet the need to revive the U.S. Navy, and South Korea's prowess can't easily be replicated. We need engineering, uh, procurement, true. construction, uh, and uh, integration. So all has to be aligned and well-balanced. So we cannot build a ship, uh, just uh, engineering is powerful. All has to harmonize together. True. America's efforts to revitalize its shipbuilding capacity has taken on a new urgency as tensions rise over Taiwan. Beijing claims the self-ruled island as part of its territory and has threatened to take control by force if necessary. Mm. America's naval superiority is a deterrent to a Chinese invasion as long as it can be maintained. Assuming that there's not just a Taiwan conflict, but assuming there is also conflict elsewhere, the ongoing availability issues for the U.S. Navy to concentrate enough forces in the theater while having to take care of other regions, it will be a huge stretch. It doesn't mean the U.S. will not win a conflict over Taiwan, but then the question is at what cost? While the U.S. Navy is technologically superior to its Chinese rival, naval strategists argue that fleet size also matters. The bigger, the better. The yeah, clock is ticking true. for the U.S. to increase its number of warships. But the laws designed to protect America's shipbuilders have backed the Navy into a corner. Yep, the U.S. will need hard. to look beyond its shores if it is to avoid falling irreversibly behind in a new era of great power competition. That is the problem. When you deindustrialize, it is way more difficult to reindustrialize than it is to industrialize the first time around. Because you can't, like, now you're not going to start building, like, World War II level of Navy ships. You have to go straight to the high quality modern ships. That, that is a really tough challenge. The only thing I can think of is to have, literally to have Hyundai buy one of your old shipyards and set up a Hyundai shipyard in America. But yeah, that was a very interesting video.